tools and policies. In the 0.12 release, we are introducing a Teams hierarchy. Previously, in Open Metadata, an admin created Teams and assigned an owner and users. However, this team structure is one level and doesn't represent how the teams are organized and structured in the real world. In 0.12, we built a hierarchy for Teams, which will allow admins to create a team structure. As you can see, Finance can contain Sales, which can contain multiple additional subteams. This makes team and user management much richer and representative of how the companies are organized. This also helps build roles and policies at the user and team level to manage permissions better. Let's see how we can add a sub-team under the data platform. On this page, we have the Add Team button. This opens a menu where we need to add the sub-team and display names, then create the team by pressing OK. Now if we go back to the team level overview, we can see our newly created sub-team under the data platform. On the roles and policy side, we re-architected the roles and policies and added a brand new UI to manage them. Previously in Open Metadata, a role contained a single policy which had rules, but the rule configuration was simple and wasn't expressive. For example, you could not add more than one policy, and for rules, you could only select an operation from the dropdown and set that to either allow or deny. Based on the community feedback, we are shipping a completely new rule configuration, which is much more advanced and allows users to build more expressive rules using conditions. For example, let's look at one of the out-of-box policies. Now, as an admin, you can configure resources and operations, the effect, and add in conditions. Resources restricts the policy to act on only the ones selected. For operations, we have an exceptionally expressive set where you can restrict what users can create, delete, edit, or view. Essentially, all the operations available in Open Metadata are listed here. In this new version, we have per entity operations that can be configured as allow or deny, or by adding a conditional rule. The effect of the policy will be the same. You will deny or allow a set of users access to these resources or actions. The condition is built using Spring Expression Language. In this case, what we are saying here is that we allow all permissions on all resources and operations if the user is logged in as the owner of these entities. Now, Let's add a rule where we deny anyone to view sensitive data, except if they are the owner. Under Settings and Policies, we click Add Rule and give our rule a name. The best names give some idea of what the policy is doing. We will set all the resources and operations we want to deny access if the tag is labeled as PII sensitive and if the user is not the owner. As you can see, the new rules are extremely powerful and adds an easy complexity to provide conditions and structure to your metadata based on your organization boundaries and needs. With the new architecture, policies can have more than one rule and roles can have more than one policy. You can continue to add all the relevant policies to each role as needed. If we look at the teams at an organizational level, we have a role here. And this is applied to all of the users. We can also assign roles to individual teams, but the team level roles cannot override the organizational level ones. The hierarchy is that organizational level policies and roles will always dictate a user's allowed or denied actions, and a user's team will add additional policies and roles to the organizational level ones. In 0.12, Open Metadata provides a system-level policies by default. This will allow an easy starting point for any admins to manage, configure, and add onto these basic policies to ensure data security. With this release, Open Metadata now provides a rich team management system and a world-class roles and policies hierarchy to organize your metadata and users. Data Quality and Profiler Let's start with the Data Profiler. To add a profiler ingestion to a service, Navigate to the service and select the Add Profiler Ingestion from the dropdown. Now, when adding a new profiler ingestion, we streamline the database, schema, and table filter patterns. We moved away from the FQN filter, and now you can just include or exclude filter patterns by name. 
One of the most important updates to this framework is you can now sample your data. Here, you can add a percentage of the data that you would like to have sampled for the profiler. This means that for large data sets, you can save time by sampling a subset of it. This is applied at the workflow level, so every table in that workflow will have that sample percentage. In addition to this, we have added a thread count. This allows you to change the number of threads that your computations run on, so you can reduce the amount of time it takes to run the profiler and actually get the metrics. In our tests, this significantly reduced the time it took. In fact, it reduced it by an order of magnitude. So be sure to try out this fantastic time and money saving options on your workflows. Once we have set up the profiler, we can choose to have it run automatically on the minute, hour, day, or weekly timescale. For now, we're going to run this manually, so hit Add and Deploy, and let's head over to the service now. From here, we can run the ingestion and even look at the logs. Once the profiler is finished running, we will see a green success, and we can head over to the Profiler tab and check out our beautiful new UI. At the top, we have the summary metrics for the table. Below that, we see the metrics broken down by column. If you remember the old UI, it had similar data displayed, but now the difference is mind-blowing. The new layout has color and readability that allows for a much better understanding of the data. Now you can see even more detail on the metrics by clicking into a column. Here, we get a more detailed summary of the profiler runs of that individual column, and how your data is changing over time. The default is to view the previous three days, but you can choose to look all the way back to 60 days. Let's go over to the summary where we can change the profiler settings directly from this page. Now, with the new profiler settings, you can change how much of the table's data you want to be profiled. You can also choose to exclude columns you do not want to run the profiler on. Or you can include columns, and instead of running all the tests, you can pick a subset of tests which makes sense to run on those particular columns. On the data quality side, with 12.0, we are taking data quality to another level. Our goal with open metadata is to define standards for all things data. Data quality tests can be expressed in JSON schema, and now they can be added dynamically using our Test Definitions API. This will enable adding a homegrown custom set of test cases to open metadata. Previously, open metadata used to run all of the test cases as part of a single profiler workflow. This, however, restricts how many tests can be run simultaneously, and it also means it's not possible for users to create tests and schedule them at different intervals. With our new test suite, you can group together relevant test cases that belong to multiple tables and schedule them in a single workflow. To create a test suite, click the Add Test button. You can choose a test suite that is already available or make a new one. To make a new one, choose a unique name and add a description for your set of tests. Then we will want to actually add tests to our new set. So we give our test a name, select from the dropdown the type of test we want, and add in the necessary details, and then hit Submit. Heading back to the Profiler tab on our table, let's add a column level test to our new test suite. From this new Profiler page, you can add tests at the table or column level. On one of the columns, click Add Test. We can choose our newly created test suite from the drop-down menu and click Next. Then we do the same as before, adding a test name, selecting from the drop-down the type of test we want, and adding the necessary details for that particular test. Let's quickly add one more test at the table level. From here, let's now go to view our test suite. We can see the three tests we created, and they haven't been run yet. Let's run them by heading over to the Pipeline tab and under the Actions, hitting Run. After a bit of time and a refresh of the page, we will see each of our tests and if they passed or failed. On the table page, now under the Profiler tab, our summary stats show the tests we just ran, how many were successful, aborted, and failed. If you click on the View More detail here, you can see the data quality summary at the table level. Here we have the name of the test, the description, the time of the last run, and if that run was successful or not. In the
the details view of each test, we can see that these are displayed in a time series fashion, similar to the profile results. Users can now see how and when the test case is passing or failing and what the value is that it's failing at. Here we can visually see the time series results of the test. Green dots represent successful runs, orange aborted runs, and red failed runs. We also have these graphs available at the column level. If you click into a column and go to the Data Quality tab, where we have the same useful overview of success or failure. Webhook and Slack improvements. Along with a new settings landing page, we made improvements to our webhooks and created an easy way to connect open metadata to Slack. Under the integrations section, click Slack. If you have connected a Slack channel to open metadata already, then this will show here. If you haven't, you will see a screen that prompts you to add a Slack connection. Let's go ahead and do this now. To add Slack, you need to create a name for the integration and optionally add a description. Then you need to enter the Slack webhook URL that is unique to your Slack channel. In the description, we have linked the Slack documentation that will show you how to get your company's Slack webhook URL to enter here. Then you can tailor your Slack message to trigger when an entity is created, updated, or deleted. The default for each of these is to ping Slack for all entities, but you can selectively choose which notifications you get for each trigger type. You can set notification triggers for tables, topics, dashboards, pipelines, or ML models. Once you have entered your preferences, click Save and your Slack integration has now been created. You will get notifications in the Slack channel that you linked. Announcements. To add to the collaboration features we released in 11.0, we have now added announcements. This is a completely new feature that is designed to help your company and team keep up to date on all of the data assets and how they change over time. For example, an admin will be able to notify all downstream users or followers of a data asset of upcoming changes. You can create an announcement on tables, topics, dashboards, and pipelines. To create an announcement, click on the data asset you would like to make an announcement about. In the top right corner, next to the Follow button, you will see a three-dot menu, and click that. This opens a drop-down, and the second item on the list is to create an announcement. This opens a side drawer. In this, you will see any inactive announcements and have the option to create one. You can only have one active announcement at a time. To create your first announcement, click the Add Announcement button, then enter the name of the announcement and the start and end date that you want the announcement to run for. You can also optionally add a description that would tell users any additional information. Click Submit and the announcement is created. If you choose the announcement to start in the future, then it will show as inactive for now. If you set the start date for today, Refresh the data asset page and the announcement will appear at the top right in a yellow announcement box. Announcements are like any activity in open metadata. They appear in the activity feed on the landing page and you can react to them with your favorite emojis or even open a thread of conversation. Activity feed notifications. Previously, the bell icon in the top right-hand menu when clicked would bring you to your profile page to show you your new notifications. With this release, we have modified this icon to give an at-a-glance overview of the five most recent tasks and mentions assigned to you. Now, when you click the bell icon, it opens a small drop-down menu with two tabs. The first shows the recent tasks that have been assigned to you. The other is a list of all your recent mentions, that is when someone adds you in a thread. At the bottom of each tab, there is a view all option. If you click it, it will bring you to your profile page to either the Tasks tab with the filter set to Assign to Me or the Activity tab with the filter set to Mentions. Global Settings page. In the previous versions of Open Metadata, Settings was a drop-down menu. Anytime you wanted to navigate to any of the Settings options, you would open the menu, click the setting you are looking for, and enter into a new page. Say, if you were on the Services page browsing, the only way to move to a new settings option was to reopen the menu and select the other setting. This slows your productivity and doesn't give a great overview of what options are available to you. In the new release, we have created a settings landing page. That gives you a complete picture of all your available options. The sidebar has seven different sections. They are Members, Access, Services, 
data quality, collaboration, custom attributes, and integrations. In the integration section is the webhook, Slack integration, and bots options. Notice that glossaries and tags have been moved out of the settings completely and are now options along the top left menu. When you switch between a section in services to say custom attributes or a section under access, the sidebar remains. This way, if you are modifying multiple settings, this sidebar is always available to you for easy multitasking. Custom properties. Creating custom properties for tables has always been available through the Open Metadata UI, and we have now extended this to any entity. From the new settings page, under the section Custom Attributes, you now have five options, tables, topics, dashboards, pipelines, and ML models that you can create a custom property for. If we click on one of these options, a page opens under the tab Custom Properties. To the right of the tab, we see a total number of the current custom properties for this entity type. We are able to add a new custom property with the Add Property button. We will then give our property a name. It must start with a lowercase letter. Then select an appropriate type. This is a choice between an integer, markdown, or string, which will limit the values to one of these types. Then you can optionally add a description to provide any more information to your team. After you have created your custom property, it will become available to use by anyone. We can navigate to one of these entities and under the tab Custom Properties, we will see the property we just created. We can then add a value by clicking the Edit button, entering a valid option, and then click the check mark to accept it. New Connectors We have added three new connectors in this release. They are Red Panda, Dagster, and Fivetran. Red Panda is the streaming data platform for developers. Our new integration allows users to document the topics and schemas from Red Panda. Dagster is an orchestrator that's designed for developing and maintaining data assets, such as tables, datasets, machine learning models, and reports. This integration will allow you to make all of your Dagster pipelines available in open metadata. Fivetran improves the accuracy of data-driven decisions by continuously synchronizing data from source applications to any destination, allowing analysts to work with the freshest possible data. Now, all of your Fivetran pipelines will be available in open metadata.